What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about three stocks that I'm looking to swing trade here in the month of April in 2019. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. And remember, if you guys enjoy this content, you like the videos here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. So you can see here on the screen, AMD Advanced advanced micro devices this is the first company that i'm actually already in in terms of having a position and i'm looking to swing trade in the month of april in 2019 so let's break this down on a technical basis here let me just pull out my little support and resistance tool here and right off the bat guys we can see amd here is on a nice little pullback from about 30 dollars down to about 27 dollars and typically when i'm swing trading in the stock market i don't like chasing stocks that are already at all-time highs right i don't like chasing stocks like starbucks for example right that look like this on the chart or Microsoft that are already at their peaks right I like chasing not really chasing but I like investing and trading swing trading stocks that have taken a bit of a beating and are already on an uptrend reversal pattern here just like AMD right we can see from $34 it's peak it took a beating back down to $16 over that you know span of October to December where the market markets were very red. And from there, you know, it's been recovering very nicely, right? It's not at the peak yet, but at the peak of 34, but it's really close. You know, it's on that little pullback and it's maintaining the 50 simple moving average support, right? So this is typically what I'm looking for in terms of my swing trades. And you'll notice all the three ones that we're going to be talking about today are going to be looking similar in terms of their patterns. So AMD from the peak here at $30 down to this uh, support that we're holding Holding on the 50 simple moving average there has been let's see how much margin of profits been opened on AMD here we can see from around um, you know 2780 where we are right now up to previous resistance levels roughly at about $30 that's about a 7% margin of profit opened on AMD so if we enter this one on the break of about $28 right I'm already in from yesterday but let's say we add another position here at $28 we can probably get five, six percent if we get to the you know next resistance level. And if we break that level, if we continue the uptrend, push to a higher high at that point, right? We get into the 31s, maybe. You know, this is going to be a level um, where we can potentially get, you know, maybe seven, eight percent profit. So let's just draw out some resistance levels very quickly. And you can argue that, you know, we got uh, rejected at this point a couple of uh, days ago because that was a resistance from back in the beginning of September in 2018 before AMD went on this really big run up to $34. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but a lot of analysts out there I've actually been upgrading the stock in terms of AMD, right? We can see an analyst here upgraded it from uh, $28 to $33. Bank of America upgraded it from $30 to $35. So there's a lot of, you know, sentiment around, uh, you know, bullish sentiment around AMD right now. A lot of its chips are being... Um, you know, a lot of analysts are saying uh, these chips are going to be beating Intel next year. Their profitability is going to be very, very strong in the coming quarters. So there's just a lot of bullish sentiment around AMD right now. And honestly, again, on a technical basis, the fact that we're holding a higher low here on the 50 SMA, it's looking super attractive to me. And just to tell you guys right now, I'm in at about like 27.50 or 27.60-ish right now from yesterday whenever I'm swing trading, I'm sure a lot of you know this, but for the new viewers out there, I'm typically scaling into my positions with about 20 to 30% of my goal position size. This way, let's say if the stock doesn't go my way initially, let's say it drops 5%, you know, the next day, I'm not going to be losing as much money as if I went in all the way with 100% of my goal position. So that's the benefit of really just scaling into your position. You can mitigate your risk that way. So 
let's talk about um, the second one that I'm currently uh, actually in and also looking to swing trade, and that is NVIDIA, guys. Ticker symbol NVDA. This is another um, semiconductor chip company, right? And just like AMD, like I said, this is another stock that's been battered down, right? Notice I'm not chasing a stock that's all the way at the all-time highs, but this one's dropped from nearly $300 per share down to $124. Literally, guys, that's a, you know, that's it lost half of its value and some at that point. And from there, we've been recovering very nicely, right? We've been breaking out of the simple moving average resistances. The 50 SMA is no longer acting as a resistance. The 180 SMA is no longer acting as a resistance. They're now acting as support levels, right? We're bouncing on top of those levels. We're making higher highs. The reversal is looking very, very solid right now. And we broke over the past couple of weeks, we've broken out of the 175 resistance from a couple of months ago. We recently broke out of the 185 resistance. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this for those watching NVIDIA and trading and investing it yourselves. And now we're looking to trade between the 185, 188 level of support and the next resistance, which is at around 204 to $205. And again, NVIDIA is already one that I'm in right now in terms of build, uh, having built a position, and I'm looking to potentially add a bit more money into NVIDIA today, um, you know, depending on what the price does, right? If we start to get into the 193s, maybe 194s, I'd potentially add some more money there. But the goal here, for my personal opinion, again, my personal opinion, my personal plan, you have to make your own plan, and don't just trade these based on my opinion, that's super, super important important but what I'm looking to do here is I'm looking to get in or out rather I'm looking to sell my shares roughly at about $197 per share 198 right around this level so if we were to have a big green day today over the next couple of days here that's going to that's going to get me right to my goal target on Nvidia of around $197 and let's see you know my average cost right now is about 190 uh, like 190 50 somewhere around there and up to around 198 my goal that would be around a 4% margin of profit. And a lot of you out there are probably like, you know, that's not that much, right? That's not that much profit for a couple of days as a swing trade. But my whole, um, you know, my whole goal here in the stock market, especially when it comes to trading stocks and swing trading, is not to aim for these penny stocks that are going to go up 30, 40%. I'm not looking to swing trade these leveraged ETFs that, yeah, they do have high potential. You can make 20, 30% in a couple of days swing trading them, but they have a lot of risk as well, right? You can lose that same amount of money if you're swing trading these leveraged ETFs. I like sticking to more conservative plays here, ones that I can grab, you know, 3 4% out of in terms of swing trades over the span of, let's say, a week or two. That's always nice. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I got uh, a trade on NVIDIA here, 6% overnight. I was ecstatic about that. I'm sure you all remember when NVIDIA moved. Uh, I don't, it might have not been overnight. It might have been in a two day span, but nonetheless, it was a big move. You know, these are my quote unquote, uh, you know, big moves, right? Like, Five six percent overnight or five six percent in two days, but for some people that might not be a lot, right? But I'm more conservative. Again, I like to conserve my capital. I don't like just throwing my money into penny stocks overnight or throwing my money into leveraged ETFs for a span of a week because, again, there's a lot of risk attached to that. Although there is a lot of rewards, so. Right now, again, I'm just sticking to around a 4% gold uh, profit target on NVIDIA. been holding these shares for a couple of days here, and I'm just waiting for the pop-up towards that resistance again for me to sell my position. And this is the second stock I am looking to swing trade for this month. And the third one, let's talk about AAPL, good old Apple Inc., guys. Apple, I love Apple stock, guys. I, I'm not going to lie to you. This is probably one of my... My favorite stocks in the stock market and for those of you guys who have been following the channel um i've been buying apple stock all this time period down here when we were falling mostly in the month of december right i remember i bought a bunch 
you know, in the 160s. I bought more in the 150s. I bought more in the 140s. And this is in my long-term portfolio, right? So those shares right now, they're up about 20 to 30%, some of them depending on, you know, which uh, shares we're talking about. Obviously, the ones from down here, they're up nearly 35 or 30%, something like that. You know, the ones here up 20%. And you guys understand what I'm, what I'm saying here, right? But in terms of a swing position, I'm not in Apple quite yet. And I'm waiting to see now, are we going to break this 200 level? It seems like we already are. And we, it seems like we did that yesterday and the day, uh, the two days before, I believe when we were at 203, but are we going to maintain that level as a new support? That's what the whole key is here. I want to see, are we going to maintain this level to then try and truck up to the next high, which we can see here. The next resistance is at around $210. And that's where I'm actually looking to capitalize lies on Apple Inc here ticker symbol AAPL and the pattern on Apple very similar to Nvidia and AMD the stock's been hammered we're reversing breaking above moving averages making higher highs holding the moving averages at support levels and we saw the big pullback yesterday right remember that that um or two days ago, whenever that was, nonetheless, we saw the pullback where the Apple stock ended up not making that 10th day of green in a row, which would have been a record from October in 2010. We snapped that at nine winning day, uh, you know, nine green days in a row. And that's the day we saw the pullback or the day after that, we saw the pullback. It doesn't really matter. All we need to know is we saw the pullback and we bounced for a higher low from the previous, pretty much maintaining the uptrend and pretty much maintaining a support on that old resistance level. So this is a good sign that Apple wants to really just continue this push to the upside. So let's just look here. And again, we're making that higher low. We're pushing up. So just keep an eye on it today, guys. It's very key when you're watching this video. Go back, take a look at Apple. Where are we at right now? Are we going to be maintaining this 201 level? Are we going to be, let's say, breaking into the 205s? That's going to be a huge sign. And at that point, I'm probably going to be swing trading Apple. Of course, I'll let you guys know in the next video. But that's just the gist of what I'm seeing here, right? It's just been very strong. A lot of analysts are upgrading Apple to 225, 230. You know, these are things that, you know, cause optimism around a stock. They cause bullish sentiment around a stock. And this is what I am looking for, right? I don't like getting into stocks. Again, just a little side tangent here that have a lot of negativity around them, right? Like Boeing stock, for example, ticker symbol BA, right? 20% of their uh, what, what's it called? Their 737 production has been cut, which is expected. A lot of people around the, the world, they don't want these planes anymore because they've deemed them dangerous. Two crashes in the span of six months. That's very huge. You know, these are negative things surrounding a company, right? And the stock's price has suffered. Let's look at Tesla very quickly. We got some news this morning that their Gigafactory is being paused, right? These are negative, negative, negative things around a company. I'm really happy actually that I sold out of Tesla because this is something that can very well cause the stock to drop more. You know, Elon Musk and the SEC, you know, although I was trading Tesla throughout that, you know, this is something that I was able to capitalize on, although there was a bit of a risk and that was a bit of a risk on my part, but these are typically things that I like to stay away from, although I did dabble and Tesla, so I'm being a bit of a hypocrite here, but you guys understand you have to take calculated risks in terms of trading. But now with this Gigafactory news, you know, I'm probably going to be staying away from Tesla a couple of days and seeing how it's going to react. So that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Feel free to drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this video. I would love to know. I'll catch you all in the video later today. Peace out. Good luck today. Have a good one. I'll see you all soon.